are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. A short film called Uncivilized explores the lives of four Syrian refugees in Canada. Later on, we will talk to the filmmaker and producer. But first, some news headlines. Alleged assault by five world junior hockey players. Shooting at Vaughan Condo leaves six dead. Anglicans and Muslims tackle racism in Edmonton. Bombing kills nine federal Iraqi police officers. And now the details. New court documents reveal details about a victim's account of sexual assault by five world junior hockey players in 2018. The sexual assault case was closed by London police in 2018, but this year it was opened again. The 94-page document obtained by a media source Sunday from the Crown includes interview transcripts and search warrant requests. Some of the information in the documents has been redacted. Police investigators say that they have reasonable grounds to accuse the players. So far, none of the allegations have been proven. Hockey Canada and the National Hockey League are also investigating the case. A shooting has left six people dead and one injured in a condo tower in Vaughan, Ontario last night, says York Police. Police responded to a call of an active shooting scene late evening at, at 7.20. The alleged gunman was killed during the interaction with the police. Police say they are unaware of the cause of the incident. York Regional Police Chief Jim McSween calls the incident a, quote, horrendous scene. He says there is no further threat to the community. The police say they are notifying the families of the suspect and victims and cannot share any further details. The City of Edmonton has awarded a grant of around $23,000 to a Muslim and Christian organization for a joint anti-racism project. The grant, named Faith Spaces Safe Spaces, will bring people of the two communities together in dinners where they can discuss issues and solutions in making their faith communities safe spaces. Reverend Jordan Ware, the Social Justice and Community Connection Church official for the Anglican Diocese of Edmonton, and Omar Yaqub, Executive Director at Islamic Family and Social Services Association, met last February during a virtual conference. Both expressed a desire to tackle racism in Edmonton. A bombing in Kirkuk, a north central city in Iraq, has left at least nine federal police officers killed and two critically injured. The incident occurred Sunday on a moving police convoy. A federal police official told the media a direct attack with small arms came after the explosion. The Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL, has claimed responsibility for the attack. Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sudani has ordered that the perpetrators be brought to justice. Al Sudani has advised that the security forces to show vigilance and carefully inspect the roads so that there is, quote, no opportunity for terrorist elements. And that's it for the news. When Ukrainian refugees started pouring into Europe, we all saw the media making distinctions between civilized and uncivilized refugees. One Calgary filmmaker and her team decided to ask four Syrian refugees in Calgary what they thought of that reporting and how life in Canada has been since arriving. We welcome director Raoul Al-Masoud and producer Chowuko and Akadia to the show. Salam and welcome. Salam. Thank you Hi. for having us. Thank you for having us. It's our pleasure. Such an important topic. Uh, tell us, uh, Raoul, what gave you the idea to focus on this particular issue and you called the, the film Uncivilized? Absolutely. So when the when the news started coming in about uh, the Ukrainian the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we started seeing Ukrainian refugees flooding into uh, Europe, and um, we started hearing or like reading what the Western media outlets, the vocabulary they were using to you know um, classify Ukrainian refugees versus refugees from other parts of the world. 
um, I had this idea that you say that those are civilized and those are not civilized. So let me show you um, what uncivilized refugees are doing here. And so um, I pitched this idea and then I had a wonderful team who we all worked together in shedding light on those Syrian refugees here in Calgary and to <clears throat> show Canada and the, and the world in general what those uh, refugees are doing and what refugees in any part of the world can do when, when they're given the potential and opportunity. Later on, we'll have a chance to, uh, you can tell us what they actually said, but just tell us a little bit, are you also yourself from Syria? Yes, I am. So did you come as a refugee? Um, I did not. I was like fortunate enough to not to live through the war and come to Canada through the war. But um, a big percentage of my family, uh, friends and family friends um, have been through this. Um, they had to like seek refuge in Europe through the like traveling through the boats, as we all know, um, and other parts of the world. So um, myself in particular, I did not go through this, but it's all around us. Um, my country has been affected and it's not just about Syria, any other refugees from any other part of the world um, who are going through this, they deserve to have a spotlight and deserve to be treated equally um, regardless of their religion, skin color or any other thing. So it's very personal for you. There's a very personal connection. It, it is personal and it is also like moral in the end, no matter the person's religion or um, skin color. As th since they're refugees fleeing war, they mm. all should be treated equally. Mm. So let me throw it over to you, Chiwoko. What were your first thoughts when Raoul pitched the idea to you? Um, so the, <clears throat> the thing is, um, first of all, we all pitched different um, documentaries for the final year project. Um, and when her documentary was picked, um, she called me and said, hey, I, I want you to produce this with me because I know that you are very sensitive about topics that have to do with people's rights. And I was like, let me see it first. And then we sat down together, we went through the project, we went through different pages and I was like, fantastic, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be part of. Only thing left is to find the right team. And yes, we did. You mentioned school project. Can you share what school it is? Oh, yes. It's the South and Alberta Institute of Technology, SAIT, here in Calgary. And so it's your, what, what is it, like a culminating project or something like that? It's the final year project. It's the, mm -hmm. the as film students, you have a couple of projects to end the year. One is a documentary and one is a final 20 minutes film. Mm -hmm. And um, the documentary was picked and we went head on and made this work. Okay, so you talked uh, about uh, finding the team. I, I assume you mean the team uh, that were going to work on the project with you. But I want to talk to you about finding the interviewees, Raud. You ended up with four wonderful people, a, ten a table tennis player who's in a wheelchair, a farmer, a soap maker, and an actor. I mean, what an amazing variety. Tell us uh, how you found these people and how they agreed to be on the show. Um, so I wanted to have people from different fields and industries, um, first of all, to show that refugees are coming from diverse backgrounds and they're not limited to only one industry and one or one workplace. Um, so I wanted to, you know, bring them from different um, uh, workplaces. And then two of them, I know them personally, and the other two I've heard about them in like some um, news reports um, or like articles. And so... Um, the producer and myself, we reached out to them and they were very welcoming of the idea. And then uh, when we went into production and got to know more about them and what they're doing and their contribution to the society, it was just the perfect um, pieces of puzzle to put together um, to show that like refugees are in the arts, which is a very hard um, field to break into as a, as a refugee or a newcomer. Um, they're in the business, they're in the agriculture, they're in the sports. Um, even if, they're, if they have a disability, if you give them the opportunities, they can still do it. Um, and so it was really important to, you know, you know shed light on different um, industries or different fields that wherever you put them, if you give them the chance they deserve and you give them like the support they need, they will shine in that field. And Chiwoko, Rao mentioned uh, that you were part of reaching out. Did you have to twist anyone's arm or were they eager? Oh, no. So the first thing is... Um, Immediately we sat down and we crafted out the, the project itself and all the interviewees. Um, we started sending emails to each of them and each of them, you know, going through the documentary, like, 
this is what I want to be part of. Um, the first person we reached out to was Dima. Dima and her husband Osama, they were like, whoa, this is what we want to do. We reached out to Mohammed the farmer. He was awesome about it, took care of us. He said, anything we need, just come, we'll do it together. So everybody, every interviewee on this project was welcoming and 100% ready to do it. And they did. That's great. There's a, there's a scene in the documentary where you show the interviewees the news clips of media people talking about how these Ukrainians are blue-eyed and blonde-haired and civilised and not like from those, you know, uncivilised places like Syria, and you ask them to watch it and then comment on us on it. Can you just share with us what that was like for them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, some of them had seen it before, like one of them mentioned, I've seen this before, and I don't want to see it again, which just tells you how how impactful that was, like just hearing that and watching that they did not want to see it again. Others didn't, um, like others did not come across this uh, new piece before. Uh, but all of them, whether they've seen it before or not, all of them had the same reaction of like, this is just unfair. Um, this is very judgmental, this is very racist, um, that like we've all, as, as the interviewees, they've all been through war and um, been through, you know, hardships and challenges to get to a safe place and to work and, you know, to get established in the new um, community they're in. So to be judged like that or to, to be called in a way uncivilized um, was very like hurting to them. Um, especially that they proved themselves in, in, in wherever they, they went to. Um, so it was really important to see at their perspective, because as I said, I didn't, I was fortunate enough to not go through war, but I wanted to see what people who were called refugees who came here, and then they hear someone else calling them or describing them in such manner. So what it was their intake of that. Um, and so all of them were all of them agreed to the fact that this is not how you should treat a refugee. They should all be treated equally regardless of the skin color and their religion and the background and everything. There's one really beautiful scene where the farmer who's sitting on his tractor calls his wife over. She's wearing a headscarf and he kisses her and thanks her. And, you know, we have this image of the barbaric Arab man who, you know, terrorizes his woman. I'm wondering, Chawuko, if you think that kind of scene is super impactful on the audiences in breaking down stereotypes. So, so far since um, the documentary was released, we've, it's showed in a, like three different spots at the Globe Cinema um, <clears throat> and um, the, the Discovery, um, the Discovery, what's it called? Right? Yeah, the, the Calgary Justice Film Festival. Yeah, the, the Calgary, Calgary yeah. Right. Yes, the Calgary Discovery Justice Film Festival. And that scene is very impactful. It gets um, everybody watching it, you know, to see a different perspective to what, you know, the story that has been told about certain people, about certain races. I mean, I'm black and I understand how, you know, certain comments from different, you know, stations, people, you know, tend to paint certain people in different lights. You know, I'm trying to be careful here. But that scene itself, when we're doing the edits, we watch that scene over and over again, and we ask ourselves that question, what does this scene actually do to this project? And in all honesty, that scene is one of the strongest scenes in the whole documentary. It says something. It's, it says, in all your judgment and everything, there's a soul to these people. There's a soul to the human beings that you compare, you know, to certain other people. You know, I'm trying to be careful again. So okay, me, I, I'm really sorry. Thank you for sharing, but unfortunately, um, I have to cut us. We're out of time, but great, great film. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for yes, having us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please share, like, and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.